Hi guys, this is just a really quick video to go through the LAS drug pack and to give you a bit of an oversight going into your placements, what you'll be looking at. I would recommend opening these when you're in placement to have a look at all the drugs, go through them all with your drug cap by your side. Um, that's what I did when I was learning. So, but just to go through it, so you can maybe, this will help be an intro um, and prepare you a bit better for for what you're going into. So opening the packs, I've just pulled off. There's normally like a zip tie on there. It's got an easy rip tab on it, but you should always have a pair of shears on you to basically um, pull that open. But let's open it up and we'll go through it in this probably 10 minute video. Okay, so you open your pack and here it is, and you've got two sides. Okay, the side with a little sheet or sometimes they have these bits of paper on there, that would be your cardiac arrest. Okay, so you look at that side, you see the man on there, there's a, G, um, a GCS on there to help you as well. Um, and this is kind of, I guess, an easier side to look at. Why is it easier? Because it's very simple. Okay, with all these, there's documentation. So you need to fill out, if um, you use a drug each time, fill out one, one page per patient. And if we go over here, we've got all our adrenaline one in 10,000s, okay? They're all in their own little thing, own little casing. You open that up. I'm not going to open it up because obviously they're live drugs. You open it up, you've got a pre-filled syringe in there, and we'll go into those another time about cardiac arrest drills. But in there, you've got adrenaline one in 10,000, okay? And with a lot of these drugs, not all of them, some are different, but with a lot of these drugs, they put the max volume, the max you can give in here. Okay, not true of things like diazepam where you've got more than what you need, but for a few of them it is like that to, to, to make sure that you can't overdose someone on something. So that's those ones there. That's really straightforward. They're all exactly the same. Okay, but as always, check your um, drug, check your volume, and check your date. Okay, and that's where these ones are on here. If you can see, there you go, expiry 1021. Let's get them close. So that's those ones there. Coming up here, we have our diazepams, okay? So these are our rectal diazepams. They stand out, they're the only drugs in these types of packets. So what we have is our 2.5 milligrams, five milligrams, 10 milligrams. Rough guide to remembering these, always check your jail calc, as we're gonna say, but 2.5 milligrams for me, if you go age, that goes up to about three. Once you get to three, it changes to the next one up. Okay, five milligrams, once you get to five years old, it changes to the next one up. So it's no longer this one, you go to 10 milligrams. 10 milligrams is adult up until 70, okay? And what that is, is two of those. So the adult dose is 20 milligrams is the initial, okay? But always check your JR calc. That's just a rough guide that I use. When I'm looking at it, I know what to grab and then I check my JR calc just so I have a, a general guidance, basically. Other thing for these, if we look, um, it's hard to see and obviously I'm not going to open this one, but there is a kind of spout on it. So I don't know if anyone's ever put deflea or anything on, on, a, on an animal, but it's got like a, it's exactly like that. And with these, they've got like a, the liquid in kind of a, a squeezy bottle. And then there's quite a long nozzle that goes from there to there. Okay. And that's obviously to put into um, the rectum of the person that you're going to give it to. That's that one there. Okay. My top tip with these, if you are ever going to give them, is um, you depress the, um, the uh, what do you call it? the vial in the bottom there and then keep your hands squeezed all the way and then withdraw the um, withdraw the tubing. That way nothing gets sucked back up. I know it sounds gross, but it's very, very true. And I'd rather you know. So that's our rectal dad's pen on that side and that's our adrenaline. So that's pretty simple. So we close that side, we open up this side. Sorry for the small space, uh, but I'm in the car today. So we open up this side, that's that side, that's this side. We open up this side and we can see we've got what might be a bit intimidating, confusing on the bottom. And then we've got a few pouches and things up the top. So we go through the top things first. So again, we've got our amiodarone, okay? So again, it's in this pre-filled syringe because when 
you're in KDFRS and things like that, they want things pre-filled so it doesn't get confusing. So you've got bandwidth to work around other things, okay? So that's how I think of those. And a very similar one to your adrenaline drugs. So that's for your, your KDFRS for your shock and rhythms. And we've got 30 milligrams in, um, I think it's 10 mils, which is in there, 10 mil pre-filled. Uh, yeah, 10 mil. So that one is there. Uh, the next one that we go down is we've got these two little bottle glass bottles here, okay? I think they're glass, yes, they are glass. Um, so in there is our oral morphine. Try and zoom that in for you. Oral morphine, 10 milligrams in 5 mil, okay? And on there, it'll have the expiry and the date there, okay? So again, for things like morphine and, and um, uh, things like that, check your gel cap for your dosages because it's different for different people and things like that. What else we have is we've got our um, IV paracetamol. Okay, that's what this big squishy one is. It's much like the fluids. We've got another fluids pack which has them in it. And then in there, there is also um, a pouch. Uh, it's sodium chloride, but it's not for giving fluids. We have a complete different pouch for giving um, total fluids, as you guys know. Uh, but that one is just for TXA, so transexamic acid. Okay, so that's what all this little pouch is for. So that's our drugs at the top end. We've got a few syringes and things like that there. So nicely linking in with that, it goes down to our bottom section down here. Okay. So what that links in first is the way when I was first learning about these drug packs, because I came over here and it's very different to what I've used to using, is I look at the things that stand out and then I try and if I'm going to get that drug, I would look for it to stand out because they all have a slight difference about them as we go through. But the first thing that stands out to me is transexamic acid. So these big ones here are the biggest ones there and they're five mils in each, okay? Um, five mils with 500 uh, milligrams of active substance, okay? So you've got your transexamic acid. Obviously that'll zoom in a second. Transexamic acid, 500 milligrams in five mils and then we've got the expiry there, which is 422. And that's how you would read it out. You'd go, I've got transexamic acid, uh, 500 milligrams in five mils. The expiry is for 22. And for these ones, for transexamic acid, for an adult, we have uh, both of these put into the bag up here. Okay, so you draw them up with a big needle, uh, a drawing up needle, and then uh, pop them into there. And then that whole thing gets diffused. So it needs to be this, this drug. And there's a whole raft of reasons why um, that you can search out. So that's your transexamic acid. As I look along, the next thing that stands out, again, are these two, two vials that are bigger. So these are five mil vials. These are two mil vials. These ones that are a little bit longer. And then these smaller ones are one mils. Okay, so just to give you a bit of guidance. Transexamic acid you'll use every so often, maybe once a year, once every couple of years, something like that. This one you use a lot more. So this is the one that stands out to me next. And this is our ondansetron. Try and let that zoom in there. Our Danstron is four milligrams in two mils. Okay, and you've got the expiry date there. Some of them have them turned around the other way. But that's that one there. We give it as an anti-emetic. Okay. Uh, looking across, the next big thing that stands out for me is these ones over here. And this is your diazepam. Okay, again, another drug that you use every so often. Not all the time, but every so often. In the ones at university they may be a milky color they've only recently changed these to be clear but they used to be a milky color so it's just something to be aware of if it's not exactly the same um, but again diazepam 10 milligrams in two mils um, and then our expiry around there okay so they're the big ones that have kind of stood out to me there the other thing that looks a bit odd or doesn't look like other medication is this one here okay if i'm honest i've never actually used um, menzel penicillin um, but uh, knowing how to use it is important, obviously. So obviously we flick off the lid here, I won't do it because it's live, but there'll be a little kind of port, a little um, uh, port in there. And what you do is it tells you on the bottle, but look at your JL calc and you mix this, it's powder for injection, but you obviously don't inject the straight powder. You mix this with water and here's your water, okay? So you get a drawing up, um, blunt needle which will be shown you drop the 10 of liquid in from there and then pop it into here 
and then you would shake that around turn it upside down like they do in the movies and put your needle up there and draw the fluid back into a 10 mil Ooh, drop it there um into a 10 mil and then give it to your patient okay so that's that one there it's good to brush up on the drugs that we don't use a lot um but to be familiar with the ones we obviously do so that's those ones gone through there you see there is those ones that are there and then there's a couple more that stand out to me just having a look so this one stands out to me because it's not got a white label don't ask me why i've got no clue but this one stands out because the rest have got labels what this one is is hydrocortisone so i'll try and i don't know if it'll zoom there we go hydrocortisone 100 milligrams in one mil uh, so high, anything ending with a zone, a zone is usually a steroid. Um, and um, that one is given for our anaphylaxis and life-threatening asthma. Okay, check your jail calc as always. The next one that stands out to me is just sitting on its lonesome over here. Okay, so we've got this one there. And that is our centimetry. Okay, so 500 micrograms um, in one mil. And that's given for our postpartum hemorrhages, okay? So that's kind of those ones gone through there. Hopefully that's clear. The next thing that I see is something with a tag. It's the only thing with a tag in here. And what it says in it is I am use only, okay? So obviously there's been some serious incidents. There's been issues within the past. So they've put a big tag on there so people really don't give it the wrong way. So this is I am adrenaline. So one in 1,000 which is obviously different to our one in 10,000. So it's very, it's much more concentrated. And it's for IM use only. I think that's pretty clear on there, but un understandably when someone's in um, anaphylaxis or life-threatening asthma, it can, can be a bit scary. And so that's why they've put all these tags on there. The other thing with them is to note, if you look at your, your jail calc for these, it's, it's half a mil, okay? So it's 500 micrograms is your dose. For IM adrenaline. That's one of the most common drug errors is that people give a whole meal of this, okay? It's not immediately life-threatening to your patient to have a meal because their EpiPens usually have about a meal in them, but it's not best practice and you have to report it and, and obviously go through all the procedures there. But that's that one there and it stands out to me because it's obviously got the tags attached to it, okay? Uh, going down here. So we've done kind of these ones up here. We've done these ones, done these ones. We go onto these side, and again, there's two that are just on their own, this one and that one. And then there's a, a raft of a few ones there. So we'll go for the ones that are on its own. Uh, so if we go here, I'll try and let it zoom in for you. And there we have dexmethasone, which is 3.3 milligrams in one mil. So again, these are all one mil, two mil, five mil. Um, dexmethasone for your croup, your babies with the bumping cough. And then our next one, if we go here, uh, can I get that there? Is our naloxone. Uh, there we go. At 400 micrograms in one mil. Okay, and again, the date, the expiry date is 2nd 22. So a keen eye amongst you might have thought just then, why is there just one naloxone? Because the jail calc says you can give multiple for opiate overdoses, which is what we use naloxone or Narcan, as it's known as. The reason there's only one there is because it is a drug that our eeks give, and so it's in another pack called a general pack. The general pack's only got a couple of drugs in it, a couple of IM drugs, um, but it's got some subutamols and ipratropium bromides and things like that, your, your, your things that you demist into the um, nebulizer. But it's got plenty in there, and every time you're a paramedic, you also have a general drug pack with you. So they figure they don't need to fill this one with it. It's just one there that's available to you. Then you can grab your general pack. So that's why there's only one of those there. So coming along, we have on this side, so I've got this one from there, and we look at this one, and it should be our chlorophet. Yep, so our chlorophenamine is our next one down there, at 10 milligrams in one mil, and this is kind of like Puritan, okay? So chlorophenamine is for your um, allergic reactions and anaphylaxis and things like that. And check your trail calc. Okay, so that one's there. Okay, so we move across and the last one is we've got these ones. In some of the drug packs, you'll notice you've got a green, some of them have got a green, some of them have got brown. Purely, that's just the brand swapping over. They might have an updated dose, okay? So that's all that's happened here. And if we look at this one here, we've got atropine, 
600 micrograms in one mil. Okay, and that's second 22. And your expiry date there. Okay. And this is genuinely, much like at university, genuinely how everything is laid out. They're laid out so through muscle memory, I can come. If I've got a patient having um, a seizure, I know my diazepam's there because they stick out. They're two mils. Um, I know you can give repeat doses. I am uh, the I am adrenaline has a tag on it. Like there's certain things that get you familiar. You're always going to have to pull it out and really look at it as I've done, turn it, check the date, all those kind of things. But instead of turning every single vial, if you get familiar with this video and where everything is, it's really going to help you to be competent and confident when your mentor might ask you, can you grab me this drug? Okay. So that's the drugs gone through, and these are things that will become more and more clear over the next two years, but it's just to give you an overview because I know you um, kind of obviously access them all the time. The last thing that maybe is not being discussed, no one's, maybe no one's ever discussed with you, is this thing in the middle. There's a pouch there, okay? It's not just to put extra bits and pieces. It's actually got something in it. If we open this one up, it has a magnet in it. So... This one, this magnet here is to turn off someone's pacemaker that is misfiring, okay? So if you're going to, if you're going to use this, it's a very serious thing to do because people who have a ICD, so an in, implanted cardiac defibrillator, it's there to shock them when they go into VT or VF. If you're going to turn that off, it's a very specialized, specific bit of equipment that should be working most of the time. Okay. If for whatever reason it's misfiring, you can get this and what I do, and, and you can hold it against the pacemaker, which is on the left kind of upper quadrant of the chest, and they, the, the, you hold it against the patient's chest. Okay. But what I actually do is I get the patient to hold it. If I was ever going to use it, I would get the patient to hold it in place against their chest like that. Okay. You might find that funny, like why would you get the patient to do it? The answer to that is if you hold that up to the patient, if the patient holds that up against their chest, they go into VT or VF, their first physiological reaction would be to drop their hand. When they drop the hand, they drop the magnet and their pacemaker can refire appropriately if it needs to. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this obviously stops the pacemaker. So the, um, and when we're talking about a pacemaker, we're talking about an internal cardiac defibrillator. Okay, we're not just, some people have um, what they call an on-demand pacemaker. So when their heart only beats every two or three times, it, it picks up the slack and, and, and beats for them. We're not trying to turn off that. We're trying to turn off an internal cardiac defibrillator. Okay, so that's what these magnets do. If I'm honest, I've never used this. Okay, we don't have one in Australia and it's very uncommon to use this. But on the rare occasion, you, you now know what it does. Um, and the next thing I was just going to say lastly about these is if you, um, the way to know if it's firing inappropriately, because if it's firing going off, there's usually a, a bloody good reason why it's doing that. How to know if it's doing it inappropriately is you have an ECG, you can see what, uh, that they're in a non-shockable rhythm and it fires, okay? So right before it shocks them, so you need to watch the monitor, all those kind of things, you can look at it, they're in a sinus rhythm and it shocks them inappropriately. That would be when this would be used. If they're in VT or VF and then it shocks them, that's completely appropriate and, and that's what you want the ICD to do. And obviously following your guidance and things like that, X amount of shocks, um, I think it's three from memory, three shocks, and they need to go to an, an arrhythmia centre. But that's for another day. We'll discuss, obviously, um, uh, arrhythmias and everything another day. But that's just some awareness about that one because you might see it and a lot of people don't aren't aware of how to use it or when to use it, but that's that one there. So that's our drug packs. Just to recap, we've got our patches up there. I'll just recap over this side. We've got our... Cardiac arrest drugs there, all looking pretty in purple. Diazepams, 2.5 milligrams, 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams. Check your jail count for those always, because obviously a lot of these drugs um, can do harm. Amiodarone, oral morphine, IV paracetamol, fluids, but not the fluids to give someone for their blood pressure. It's fluids to go with the transexamic acid. And then our array of drugs here uh, that you can go through.
So hopefully that's been helpful. Thanks guys.